boy, Obsidian Ant putting out a video. And in the video, he talks about, you know, the negatives and the positives of what Frontier Development is up to. Yes, we're back at it. Talking about a game I used to absolutely love, Elite Dangerous. It looks like those fleet carriers that are large garages that do absolutely nothing. You can't fly them. You can't fight with them. You can't have these big fleet battles. In fact, a lot of the Elite Dangerous community didn't even want them. In fact, a lot of people in my community call an ED erectile dysfunction. Not Elite Dangerous because people are so goddamn scared to do any type of PvP. And I read this article and I thought to myself, wait a second. I can tell what is actually happening inside Frontier Development right now by reading this article. And I, I'm telling you that a, not a lot, like after reading this, I can tell you with 90% certainty that Frontier Development for the longest time, I would say almost a year or so, from 2018 even into most of 2019, put Elite Dangerous on the back burner for other projects. We also learned that Tencent, a company controlled literally by the Chinese government, a CEO that literally is in the Chinese Congress, owns 11% of Frontier Development, by the way. Was an interesting find for me. Last week and a half ago, I did an article on Tencent. Didn't realize that Tencent was invested in Frontier Development. But I can say this, that I am very sure that David Brabin and, and he left a skeleton crew on Elite Dangerous. And that is one of the reasons primarily why you're seeing a delay on fleet carriers. There are many, 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 many people out there, many commanders that are upset with this news. They should be upset with this news. This story revealed a lot to me. This story revealed that David was sitting on his hands and that did, he didn't really give a shit for the past year about the game or the people who played it. And people should really be upset about that. And I don't see anybody really talking about it as they should. Um, uh, in order to prove overall performance, real community manager, Will Flanagan, which I know who he is, uh, yesterday on games, official forums, we have decided to refocus our efforts on addressing key issues and bugs because September's update broke the experience for many, many commanders out there. Many commanders out there were pissed off. September's update literally broke the game. It was already broke. If you ask me, it was already broke. Like elite dangerous was already broke. If you ask me. It's the gameplay is all over the goddamn place. Um, so then there was another article that I saw by Charlie uh, Hall here on uh, Polygon, which was a really well written article, except I disagree for one thing. He got involved with a faction, a, a, a squad out there um, that is basically helping people level up very fast because, you know, <laughs> to gear up. They're doing this thing called flipboarding, which is new to me. I never heard of it. Essentially, you can log in and log off and log in and log off. And you could literally go uh, to certain sections of the games in front of uh, caves, I believe that they said. And it's called uh, flipboarding, something of that nature. And I haven't played in a while. But to, to bypass all the um, to bypass all the N, um, NPC kind of PVE uh, bullshit that they have in the game that could take up to months to get uh, upgraded your ship's weapons and and the the, the parts uh, to equip your ship uh, to, to the loadouts as it were to make the perfect ship that you want uh, it takes a long time to go through that uh, with engineers and all the all the bullshit content that they that they were up to uh, two patches ago when they introduced engineers and then you know thargoids and and you know they they kind of went a little bit and took a left turn. Apparently, you can log in and log out uh, in front of caves. I think is the point uh, of the article. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And and that's like a faster way to people to uh, to basically level up their ships. So there's no better example than what Charlie is saying than the ongoing Distant Worlds 2 expedition. More than 12,000 players, the largest flotilla of ships in the game's history, are at this very moment embarked on a 65,000 light year journey to the edge of the Milky Way. Now, not to put down people that really like exploration. I love exploration. I love to see new things. I get it. But in my mind... The reason why Elite Dangerous is so broken right now and it is so fragmented is this 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 skeleton crew that is on uh, uh, that is the, the developers right now 
with Elite Dangerous, how they've put Elite Dangerous on the back burner. There is no focus and it comes straight from the top and it filters down through the gameplay. It filters down to our experiences as gamers because we, we don't have any type of focus or direction from those that are creating the game. And it's a sad thing because, you know, one, some of my best experiences of gaming were in Elite Dangerous, like the connections with the ships. I, I love the way that I felt. I, I would say that the gameplay of, of, you know, being in your ship in Elite Dangerous by par none is some of the best uh, space sim feels that I've ever had. But it's so fragmented now because of because of the fact that the loadouts are so vastly different that the gameplay is broken, especially in the PvP world. There are so many reasons why you just really can't even have good experiences if you're into PvP. Best VR experiences so far. Absolutely agree. There's a lot of pros with this game. I really, really have rooted for this game since the very beginning of me finding out about it in 2015. I knew of its existence prior to uh, 2015, actually, but really becoming more involved with it in 2015, playing the game, having a good time with the game. Uh, and I've always been very pro Elite Dangerous till I realized that David was is so disconnected uh, from... The people that are playing it and there are two distinct groups and this article talks about the two different groups and he talks about this particular group that he's with uh, and, and how they helped him get to a loot cave and find out that there is a an actual instance in the game where it's it's a broken piece of gameplay uh, that you can literally boost yourself up faster Then essentially his group that's like 12,000 ships trying to make this journey to the edge of a galaxy is then being hunted by another group. <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was really interesting and thinks, and I think it adds gameplay. And he did report, he was very balanced on this in terms of uh, the other group that were after him, but he didn't see the point of PVP in the game. Uh, at least that's the vibe I got when I read the article. Um, uh, so he talks about these different groups. He talks about the group that he's in being primarily like explorers and primarily involved more in the PVP. Uh, e aspect of the realm and then he talks about this other group of players that are more pvp oriented um and let's see here it's coming up where was it at da, 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 da. yeah okay distant ganks uh so there's there's a there's a group called distant ganks who are literally hunting uh this 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 group that he's in which is uh you know uh i can't think distant uh, it's an it's another group that that this that they're actively killing members and so he talks about the experiences of the other groups. He reports upon the other groups' uh, experiences. He talks about how some people actually like being hunted in the game, that it adds realism. Uh, but for me, there's just so many reasons why this game isn't working. You have so many systems in this game where people are very spread out. They're very far apart. If you're somebody who likes interaction in the game, A, the solo gameplay takes people out. So you're... you're you're finding that people that are afraid to play the game with other people because of the fear of getting ganked don't even want to play it with other people. So they go to the solo mode. So that takes people off the chessboard. That takes, uh, you know, pieces off the chessboard. Uh, you've got all these systems, billions of systems that make, you know, finding anyone in the game, taking chess pieces uh, off the chessboard. And so, like, if you're truly into, like, MMOs, if you're truly into, like, having experiences with other players... There's a lot of reasons why those types of people are just not enjoying Elite Dangerous at all. Plus, you add the fact that the carriers are now delayed, which both the PvP and the PvE audiences don't like. Um, you know, <laughs> Frontier needs to get back on this, put this on the front burner, crank the heat up, and figure out what direction that they want to go in. They really need to figure out what direction they want to go and they can't appease everybody. You know, this is the problem, you know, to find the way in which all the game mechanics can tie together so that you're so that you're trying to please the PVE audience so that you're trying to please the PVP audience. That's a really, really difficult thing to do. Uh, that's a super difficult thing to do. And it, it could be done, but they're just, you know, because of the entire past year and a half where I can tell you with almost a hundred percent clarity that David Brabin pretty much left Elite Dangerous with just a skeleton crew, uh, kind of abandoned, you know, the progress of the game to just throw out these little morsels, these patches, especially last September's patch that literally broke everybody's experiences. I, I'm telling you, it's just 
they need to pull their shit together and they need to figure out, you know, a, 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 a plan. They give They got to give the people a plan. There are a lot of. And, you know, when I was watching a city and ants video, I could hear it in his voice. Uh, Obsidian Ant is a, is a YouTube content creator that that got the amount of people, uh, his audience that he has based upon Elite Dangerous. Um, Obsidian Ant even commenting on one, one of my videos where I was talking about how carriers are absolutely useless. And well, now they're really useless because they're even pushed back even farther. So uh, just an interesting story that caught my eye here, everybody. Uh, just let me know what you guys think. Put uh, you know your comments down below. Thank you, Pies, for subscribing. Ending of the video professional style. Thank you, Pies, for that subscription, bro, and supporting the channel. Everybody, please, on YouTube watching right now, put your comments down below. Tell me what you think about this. I thought it was a pretty interesting article. And, of course, I like to, co I, I like to cover Elite Dangerous, too. Hopefully, they find a direction. Hopefully, hopefully, because I'm, you know, I want the best for the game. I want the best for Elite Dangerous. I really do. I really, really do. It's I have always been vocal about Elite Dangerous. Some people see my videos where I rage. The only reason why I rage a lot on Elite Dangerous is because I love the goddamn game so much. You know, and I really want to see it, you know, become the success that it deserves to be. And I've just seen this slow slide. I've just seen a very slow slide into into extinction from the game and and uh, from the people. And now I know why. Now I know why. Let's hope that Brabin uh, puts a full crew on uh, the 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 elite de uh, dangerous development. And, you know, because this is their title. This is front. This is frontier developments title. This is this is it. I don't know, you know, you know, you got <laughs> you got your railroad tycoons game and all these other kind of games at Frontiers. I, I get it, but this is it. This is it. This is their moneymaker. This is the game. For them to put this on the back burner is another dumb decision from, from a publisher. I don't know why I continue to see these dumb decisions. They continue to make stupid decisions. It's like they don't play the games. It's like there's so many times I see publishers out there that aren't connected to the pulse of the gamers. They need to hear people that are just as passionate as we are saying, what in the F are you guys doing? This is the game that makes Frontier Frontier. Put the fucking staff on the goddamn game and make it the game that we all want already. Quit dicking around. Thank you so much. And <laughs> I will see you on the next Guys, this one's getting me upset. <laughs> All right, guys. Sorry about that.